Is Canelo Alvarez the best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the world right now? It's a question that a lot of us have asked ourselves time and time again. And once again, it's fight week. And we've got Canelo on the brain. He's getting ready to go in there on Saturday against the best super middleweight in the world in Callum Smith. And the winner will no doubt be the man at 168 pounds. But as of right now, this juncture right here, knuckleheads, who is the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world? I think that when you bring up the hypothetical conversation... Two names especially always come up. And yes, yeah, sometimes we'll hear about Naoya Inoue and we'll hear about Tyson Fury, but I think consistently on most boxing fans' pound-for-pound -pound list and most boxing pundits' list as well, you'll have two guys come up, Canelo Alvarez and Terrence Crawford, right? And for me... And of course, I'm going to ask you guys at the end of the video who you think is pound for pound. But for me, the way I determine who pound for pound is, is not only do I see if they pass the eye test, right? As far as their talent and their physicality goes. But I also have to look at the resume, right? The resume is important because you could look as good as you want to look. But if you're looking good against Glass Joe and I'm looking good against Mike Tyson well, then definitely you know that I'm better than you, at least for the time being, right? So when I look at the best two pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, in order to make a determination as to who the best, I look at the eye test, and then I look at the resume. Right off the bat, for me, right? And not everybody will agree. I'm not a biased guy, and, you know, I'm objective. I'm not a fanboy of anybody. I'm a fan of some fighters, but I'm not a fanboy of anybody. But right off the bat, when I look at their resumes, I cannot help but put Canelo Alvarez as number one over Terrence Crawford. And for a while, I had Vasil Lomachenko above Terrence Crawford or about the same level as Terrence Crawford and perhaps Canelo Alvarez at number three. But this guy just continues to toil away and hone his craft and become this just absolute cultural phenomenon in boxing by not only being a huge star and always putting himself out there in the media, but also because of the people he fights right now. I gave him a bit of a hard time because I thought the Sergei Kovalev fight was a bit of a cherry pick considering that I thought Dmitry Bavol and Artur Beterbiev were better light heavyweight champions than Sergei Kovalev. But even then, I mean, here's a guy in Canelo Alvarez, right? If we're being real about it, who is probably a natural 154 pounder. Let's not kid ourselves here. This is not a tall guy. This is a guy that fought Floyd Mayweather a guy that could potentially be fighting right now at 147 pounds or 154 pounds. So for him to continue to campaign in different divisions and to move up to fight a guy at 170 pounds, 175 pounds in the light heavyweight division in Sergey Kovalev and knock him out is just amazing. So, I mean, my point is that even his cherries, right, are everybody else's watermelons. That's what I mean. And now he's coming back down one division and he's taking on a Callum Smith, a very dangerous guy, the best guy at 168 pounds. He's also, if you look at his resume, he's also faced incredible competition throughout his career, right? These are guys the caliber of which are just not there on Terrence Crawford's resume, you know, whether it's his fault or not. But let's look at some of the names that Canelo Alvarez has fought, right? We mentioned Sergey Kovalev, Daniel Jacobs, a former titleist, Rocky Fielding, and that was for a WBA super middleweight title, 
Gennady Golovkin twice. And, you know, I know a lot of people will say, well, Golovkin, you know, could have won those fights. And I do think Golovkin won that first fight. But Canelo absolutely brought it on the second fight. And in my opinion, I thought he won that fight. And I was okay with that decision. Um, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Liam Smith, the brother of Callum Smith. Amir Khan, Miguel Cotto, James Kirkland, Eddie Slandi Lara, also a fight that a lot of people thought Lara won for whatever reason, but I thought Canelo won that fight and pressed the action. Alfredo Angulo, Floyd Mayweather, Austin Trout, Jose Cito Lopez, Shane Mosley, Kermit Cintron, and Alfredo Gomez. I mean, Kermit Cintron was a very good fighter in his prime. And Kermit Cintron is a guy that Canelo fought back in 2011. I mean, listen to this absolute murderer's row of fighters that Canelo has fought. Can you believe that it's already been seven years plus since Canelo fought a very dangerous Austin Trout? I mean, listen, this guy's resume is so far and beyond everybody else in boxing right now look i'm not bringing up floyd mayweather or retired fighters but so far and beyond everybody right now that's currently fighting and boxing right now that you just gotta give him the benefit of the doubt even if he weren't as skilled as he was you still gotta put him on your top 10 pound for pound list considering who he's fought and the result the problem is when you're trying to argue against Canelo being number one pound for pound, he's also got the skills and the dedication and the power and the head movement and the defense and the body punching and the arsenal and this, you know, pretty decent speed. You know, Canelo Alvarez is a guy, ladies and gentlemen of Knucklehead Nation, who's just, he's done it all. He's done it all. And he continues to do it all and continues to set an incredible example for boxing by going in this Saturday with the most dangerous super middleweight in the world after knocking out Sergei Kovalev at 175 pounds. And he's just 30 years old. I mean, part of me wonders, does Canelo Alvarez have a lot of miles on the odometer Is he an old 30? Will we see him age rapidly? Or is he a guy who is still yet to reach his prime? I mean, that is an absolutely terrifying prospect. If Canelo is a guy whose odometer hasn't been run up, despite this amazing list of people on his resume, it's, it's a terrifying prospect to think that he could still not be in his prime at just the age of 30, you guys. I mean, listen, typically boxers don't reach their prime at the age of 30. Typically, it's a little bit later than that, right? Almost mid-30s for some of them. So, you know, for me, I look at that, and then I look at Terrence Crawford's resume, and the best guy, listen, the best guy for me, hands down, I mean, there's no argument, on Terrence Crawford's resume is the last guy he fought, Kell Brook. Uh, Amir Khan was on there, but he was a shot Amir Khan. And you really, you really don't have any other big names on there. I mean, Ricky Burns was on there. He was on his way out. Yoriorkis Gamboa was on there. He was kind of on his way out as well. Um, Jose Benavidez Jr. wasn't really tested, you know, at the highest level. So, you know, you just can't really compare these two resumes. And, you know, that's the only thing, but it's a very significant thing for me that separates Canelo Alvarez from the rest of the pack. And the rest of the pack starts at Terrence Crawford. Honorable mentions for me include Errol Spence, of course. Uh, Now, yeah, in no way I mentioned him. Tyson Fury, uh, Josh Taylor. Alexander Usyk, Teofimo Lopez, Lomachenko, and a guy that get, gets left off that list for me that should also be considered is definitely Artur Beterbiev. I think the guy's an absolute monster. So I want to ask you guys now, 
Who is your number one pound for pound in the world and why? Put that in the comments below. As you do that, smash the like button and then hit the subscribe button, the bell notification icon next to it so that you could join Knucklehead Nation and then become an official member of Knucklehead Nation by getting your fighters rep gear in the links below. I always rock the shirt. Look how dope this shirt is. We got shirts, hoodies, masks, tanks. As you purchase your shirt and whatever item from the links below, you not only help me build this channel, but you also help build the only kickboxing promotion that matters, Fighters Rep Promotions. It's a promotion where we put the best against the best, where we're growing rapidly, and with your help, we can become the best kickboxing promotion in the world. So I appreciate your support. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about this fight, and we'll talk soon, knuckleheads.